Cats have nine lives, but how many do turtles have? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of yet another Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Heroes are not born. They're created. That's what your father and I were trying to do. Create heroes. An original run of nine years, three live-action movies, a short-lived live-action series, another six-year run on TV, an animated movie, and yet another run on TV that's active right now. Not to mention extensive merchandising, video games, and comic books. In fact, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles started out as a comic book, one of the few brands to jump off the page and onto multiple screens long before it became fashionable. And when mainstream audiences were really only familiar with DC's Trinity, Spider-Man, and maybe the Hulk. But unlike those properties, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles has been associated with multiple studios. Lionsgate back in the early days, Saban Entertainment, and Warner Brothers New Line Cinema all had a piece of the pizza pie. It's only recently that they've become property of Viacom under the Nickelodeon banner. But while Nickelodeon is a powerhouse when it comes to the small screen, they don't always get it right when transitioning to the big screen. Rugrats was an early success with three films, yet other shows haven't been as lucky. Plus, who can ever unsee the horror that was M. Night Shyamalan's Avatar The Last Airbender? They did win an Oscar for Rango, yet Lemony Snicket and the Spiderwick Chronicles all failed to become franchises. But now, Michael Bay is on board, and love him or hate him, he has plenty of experience turning 80s icons into modern-day box office juggernauts. But can't he succeed without his trademark explosions? He is deploying his discovery Megan Fox, practically a plastic toy herself at this point, along with top-of-the-line special effects. Thankfully, Bay backed away from the idea of making them aliens after the internet nearly imploded upon hearing the news, yet audiences are still fearful of other potential changes to the original concept. Also, Bay himself won't be behind the camera, but rather Jonathan Liebsman, who Bay personally brought up to the big leagues when he selected Liebsman to direct his Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot. Since then, Liebsman hasn't exactly flourished, but still managed to keep his career alive with Battle Los Angeles and Wrath of the Titans. But this time around, no one can accuse Bay of not having a script, as he's enlisted Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol writers Josh Applebaum and Andre Nemec, along with Divergence Evan Doherty. So with apes already entertaining adults this summer thanks to advancements in motion capture, does that mean it's now turtle time for families? Man, am I a sucker for swag! Whose ever idea it was at the studio to give these out to AMC Stubbs members, at least at my theater, is a genius and deserves a raise. So, picture this. I'm at the movie theater. I've got on my Raphael mask. They're a little, I watched it with them. I actually watched the movie with this on. They're a little hard to step. As you can see, I got a, a makeup smudge on mine because it kept falling into my eyes. But I had this on with my 3D glasses. Definitely see this movie in 3D. And my movie theater pizza. Because, of course, what other snack can you possibly eat? while watching a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, movie. So I had everything set, and it was really fun because uh, the build-up to this movie was great because everybody, a lot of people at least, adults uh, and kids, had their masks on. And it was so much fun. They had all the different colors, and you could pick. Uh, and so I was super psyched uh, by the time this movie started to play. And... I enjoyed it as much as I could for somebody who never really understood the popularity of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in the first place, uh, and also for a movie that I think is largely aimed at small kids. Uh, but I, as I said, I did enjoy it. Some parts I enjoyed very much. Uh, but the problem I had, the biggest problem I had, was that it never really got to an 11. Uh, it never got to an 11 in terms of action. It never got to an 11 in terms of humor. And it never got to an 11 in terms of spectacle. And I think that that, that trinity, action, humor, and spectacle, is what saves the Transformers franchise. And it just didn't come together here. I kept waiting for the movie to hit that 11. And I would say, personally, it never got higher than maybe a 7 or a 7.5 in terms of that excitement. Uh, but as I said, I did like certain aspects about it. So what did I like? All right, well, as I said, the 3D. 
excellent 3D, especially in the opening sequence, which, by the way, was done in the format of a comic book. Uh, if you've seen the recent, um, you know, for instance, the, some of the Disney live-action fairy tales, like uh, I think the most recent that comes to mind is Oz the Great and Powerful. Very stylized opening sequence in terms of, you know, the cr uh, this isn't really so much a credits. This was like a, a quick origin sequence a little bit to get you just up to, up to speed with the turtles. Uh, and this was done similarly, uh, you know, very uh, stylized, very artistic, and as I said, in the style of a comic book. And I respected that. I respected this movie overall seemed to have uh, respect itself for the origins of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, for the source material. Uh, I do think they made some changes but as someone who was never a fan, uh, I was okay with those changes, and I actually thought they were pretty good. I don't want to give any spoilers away. I'll discuss that in my spoiler review. But I liked the changes they made. I thought they were clever and they were uh, organic. Uh, so I'd be curious to know how Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, fans feel about it. So uh, I liked I liked that aspect of the film. Uh, also, I thought the turtles the turtles looked good. They were well realized, and I liked that they each had a distinct personality and look. Uh, although Johnny Knoxville, by the way, uh, did a voice for one of the turtles. He did do the funny turtle. Uh, he did the turtle leader, and I wouldn't have paid him money. I mean, I guess they didn't pay him that much, and they haven't really used him so much as, so far as I can see for promotional reasons, but this is kind of like Vin Diesel as Groot over in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Did they, their personalities don't come through in the final product. And, uh, I mean, I guess that's debatable to some people, with the Groot, at least you've been saying, but I just was never like, oh, yeah, Johnny Knoxville, or who's doing the voice of Leonardo? It's so good. I mean, the real standout here, obviously, was Michelangelo. Uh, really well done. So, but the turtles, they came across well. They were believable as, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I think the special effects didn't let them down. Uh, but I just, I never understood why anybody liked giant turtles who were ninjas and ate pizza. I just didn't get it, and I still don't get it, even after this movie. I wasn't like, they finally explained it to me or made it clear or, you know, gotten me on board. And I was just like, nope, still not a fan. Uh, but, you know, they were cool. But my only thing also I would say is that in terms of this never reaching an 11, I think they waited too long to get the turtles in the picture with the movie, literally. I think that they would have been better off having a big, exciting opening action sequence so they could, you know, get you all hyped up before they slowed things down a little bit to kind of show how they emerged from the shadows and April O'Neil found them. Uh, speaking of April O'Neil, though, surprise, surprise, the summer movie with the best female characters is a Michael Bay movie, Mike, uh, you know, a la Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was, I'm as surprised as you are. And it, for the beginning of the movie, it really helped to make it a lot more fun to watch and fascinating to watch because get this, they gave Megan Fox the Shia LaBeouf role. It was really crazy. And I have to give kudos to Michael Bay for, for creating the role and also for giving Megan Fox the role because she, in the Transformers movies, she just r runs alongside Shia LaBeouf. But here, she got to play that role. She got to be the one who interacts with these crazy and, uh, beings. She was the one who got to uh, solve the mystery and freak out, but yet still help save the day. And it was really a nice change of pace. And I also, you know, I have to say, did Megan Fox succeed in this role, by the way? Uh, I, a for effort, kind of like Dwayne Johnson a little bit. Dwayne Johnson's a better actor, though. But uh, Megan Fox, you know, to her credit, she tried really, really hard. And she was better than Dave Bautista. She was, she just made it into the realm of professional acting. Just barely. Uh, but, you know, something I did like was I liked seeing her interactions with Whoopi Goldberg in the film. Uh, talk about passing the, Be uh, passing the Bechdel test. Uh, and then also I liked the female uh, henchman that they had for Shredder. She was there. Uh, she did a nice job, uh, and the uh, nice thing was is that none of these people were supposed to be hot. There were a few comments made about Megan Fox, uh, you know, on the side about being attractive, but nobody was there, nobody was defined by being hot, and Megan Fox, it was so nice to see the hot chick uh, just be concerned with, uh, you know, solving the mystery, getting out there, um, and, and, and having, you know, just helping out the team. And I really thought that was nice, and that was really refreshing, uh, because usually, you know, they don't cast someone who looks like Megan Fox in that kind of role. So I really liked it. And also, she wasn't like a, an uber badass like Angelina Jolie. That's usually the way female action heroes tend to go. April O'Neil in this movie was just a regular person who had a, a strong drive, she had ambition, she had a lot of heart, she was a nice stand-up person, uh, and those make for the best uh, action heroes. She was very unassuming, and those make for the best action heroes, male or female. So I was really pleasantly surprised by that. You know, but of course, they could only go so far in making the movie entertaining to watch. So, should you see this? 
somebody wrote me and they said, well, Grace, you should really, you know, when you talk about if someone should see a movie, you should try to be as impartial as possible. So I appreciate that advice, and so I'm going to implement it here. I didn't totally care for the film. I didn't have a bad time watching it, but I wouldn't say, oh, you know, if something else that I was more excited about was playing, I would go and see that. So I think that this would be fun for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan to watch. I definitely recommend it. It's a must-see for that demographic. Uh, and if you have kids, I think they'll get a kick out of it as well. And of course, if you can wear a Ninja Turtle mask, it will up the enjoyment of the film. Otherwise, if you just want to go to the movies, if you just feel like a nostalgia trip, or just seeing what all the hype is about, even if you never were on the nostalgia train like myself, uh, you can go and have a good time. Just put on the mask, get a pizza, uh, and just, you know, accept it for what it is and enjoy the 3D. Definitely see it in 3D. It's very well utilized 3D. So that's my review of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Please write down, write down below what you think of the film, if you've seen it, what color mask you got. And then also, I hope you'll check out my spoiler review, which you can watch right now.